the Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. Job 33, verse 4. The seasons, as they come and go, they speak to us of the mystery of transformation. As we move from winter to spring, we see that life is perpetually unfolding. In other parts of nature, we see transformation as well. Think about the little frog and where it had its beginnings. It begins life as a little egg. In the fullness of time, that little egg will burst forth and a tadpole will appear. Have you ever gone to a pond and watched the little tadpoles? It was always such a mystery to me that after a while that tadpole that looked like a little fish would no longer be like that. It would start to grow legs, and in fullness of time it will walk upon the earth. Well, the same mystery of transformation unfolds in the butterfly. A little butterfly begins as a very small egg. Then, out of the egg comes a little wiggly thing that is furry and has lots of legs. We call that a caterpillar. And then, when it feels an inner push, it will make a crystallis around itself. And out of that crystallis, it will emerge a winged creature of incredible beauty. Well, what about your transformation? You might call yourself just a human being. And then the day comes when you see and you feel as if you are more. You then say you're not just a human being. You are a soul. You're spiritual. You are a child of God. And you begin to see that child of God unfolding, that seed of the Christ unfolding in you. A spiritual transformation has begun. And then the day comes when you think of yourself not as just a weak human being that can only do so much that is limited, but you think of yourself as a child of God, as Jesus said that you were. And you know in your inner self that your destiny of that little tadpole is also working inside of you. That as the tadpole became a frog, as the destiny of the caterpillar was to become a butterfly. Your destiny is to become a child of God, human being. And what do I mean by a child of God, human being? I have but to look at the life of Jesus Christ to know at least a bit more about what this new creature in Christ looks like. Jesus came to us to acknowledge, to discover, to experience, and to be the fullness of what he was and is. And I think he must have gone through all sorts of seasons in his life, times that he felt very human, and times that he felt very divine. He came to that place in his life where he was aware that he was fully a child of God, fully incorporating the human and the divine. And then he taught us that we should follow him and do precisely the same. Ephesians 3.16 states this, I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with the inner strength through his spirit. The hardest task will be to dissolve the critical, crippling self-negativity that often traps us where we thought that we were only a, a weak human with only so much that we could do. We will need to do what 
seems impossible. To walk paradoxically in, in two worlds at once, inhabiting an earthly body, but with a new spiritual intent. What we on this planet now are, well, it seems impossible because we are walking a paradox between two worlds, inhabiting an earthly body with spiritual intent. 1 John 4, verse 4. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is within you is greater than he who is in the world. As we walk through the seasons of our lives, we will come to powerful junctures that will call us to leave behind the old ways of thinking, the old ways of speaking, the old ways of being, the old ways of living. For God draws us, woos us, pushes us, and pulls us forward. Now, more than ever, I think we are being pulled forward to the stage where we can combine the human and the divine and honor both. We are both, somehow, at the same time. This critical time may offer a baffling crisis of spirit inside of us. It may be a time in our lives when we don't understand why something is happening. We may not understand why those pieces are configuring the way they are. We may not have been doing everything that we thought correctly. And then, even when we thought that things were correct, things begin to crumble. We experience an illness that is unexpected, or someone that we love goes away. Or we have a financial crisis, or something else happens. It may very well be that a number of people watching this video church this day are in a baffling crisis of the Spirit, and they are trying to understand. It is in these times that we often ask many questions. We ask, is this all that there is to life? Isn't there more? I want more, but I don't know how to get it. I'm afraid to take the steps forward. And we ask the deep questions of God. I think this process of going through the seasons of our lives occurs over and over again in our spiritual growth. It is not that we have one baffling crisis of spirit or that we have one major transformation. You know we have many. We go through that process again and again. And so we may be at the point right now where we are beginning another cycle. And in that time, in the beginning, we're baffled. And we ask questions. There is a book titled, When the Heart Waits. It talks about a time when the author, Sue Monk Kidd, faced such a time in her life and some of the questions that she asked herself. Maybe they are our questions also. Is it possible, she asked herself, that I'm being summoned by some deep and holy place within? Am I being asked to enter a new passage in spiritual life, a journey from the false self to the true self? Am I being asked to dismantle old masks and patterns and unfold a deeper and a more authentic self, the one that God created me to be? Am I being compelled to disturb my inner universe in the quest of 
the undiscovered being who clamors from within. My friend, what are your questions? Think about your questions. Even if you may not be in a mighty crisis of spirit right now, you may still have questions about your life, about what's happening, about where you're going. And you need to ask these questions. Even if the questions <laughs> are questions where the answers may not come instantly. It is the questioning that is important to spiritual growth. We ask our questions and we search we find that the bottom line will be that we must commit to becoming a brand new person. Thomas More said this, That is the major commitment of humanity, to become a whole new person. And that is what I pray that you'll commit to with me today. Do you know what happens when the caterpillar goes into the chrysalis and forms a cocoon around itself? When the caterpillar goes into the chrysalis, it becomes, over time, a yellow-gold liquid. It becomes liquefied. It is not a caterpillar as it was in olden times, and yet it is not yet a butterfly. It is liquid. Out of that liquid, there is a, a new configuration of cells which eventually comes forth, just as we constantly build a new body through regeneration. The caterpillar must have a time of waiting, a time of allowing that inner process to occur. When we are in a crisis of spirit and we're moving from one stage of spiritual growth to another, one stage of newness and change to another, we must allow ourselves some waiting time. With faith in God, we patiently wait. We as humans, <laughs> we don't like to wait. We want it to happen, and we want it to happen now or sooner. We want instantaneous gratification. We don't like to wait. We have a concept that waiting means that uh, we are doing nothing. But this is not true. In this waiting, there is time to do deep spiritual work through prayer and meditation. It is a time where we honor all the guidance of God that speaks to us. In James 1, it states this about the stages of transformation. I start here. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes in the dispersion, greetings. Now listen to this. Count it all joy. Count it all joy. My brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces a steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and be complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let yourself ask God, who gives generously and without reproach, and it will be given to you. That's a powerful Bible verse. We may have all kinds of internal voices pulling us, shaking us up, and we may have a lot of external voices as well that want to dissuade us from moving into that that is our destiny. Let's remember it is our destiny to go beyond just being a weak human. God has created us 
from the beginning of time to be a child of God, human being. God has created us from the beginning of time to be a child of God, human being. All the spiritual insights and Jesus point to who and what we are becoming. Our commitment is to become an entirely new person that is strong spiritually. Didn't Paul say something about being a new creature in Christ? We're going to be a whole new creature in Christ, a new and a wondrous being, someone that is happy and filled with joy. But we must allow time and let the waiting do its holy work. As we take our time inwardly in prayer, let us remember that sometimes it may take weeks or months to move through all the layers and, and come to the place of resolution. We will have often conflict and stress and pulling in many different directions, but the day will come when we will feel a peace in our new way of being. The day will come when we will feel the full glory of God to honor that spirit that is in us. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, the new things have come. Henry David Thoreau had the luxury of choosing to live part of his life at Walden Pond. He talked about this time at Walden Pond in February 1857. He wrote, You think I am impoverishing myself by withdrawing from men, but in my solitude I have woven for myself a silken web or chrysalis, a nymph-like shall, ere long, burst forth a more beautiful and a perfect creature. In our waiting, we are creating a chrysalis around us, and we will burst forth a new creature. I invite you to close your eyes at this point and acknowledge with me, as I acknowledge within myself, that each of us is so much more than the eye sees or the mind declares. Let us acknowledge for a moment this wonderful body in which we live and move and function in this world. Let us acknowledge that we are one with God by nature, that we have the seed of the Spirit planted within us. Probably for many of us, we have been loving and acknowledging this divine presence and essence of our being, maybe for a long time. Maybe we have been struggling with the either or of the human and the divine. Maybe today we are facing a baffling crisis of spirit we're consciously choosing right now holding the possibility of something greater in us as us. Even in the midst of anxiety, we hold to the wonder, the excitement, the joy of the new that is being birthed in us and through us. Our destiny is to become a child of God human being. To know that as we walk through the seasons of our lives, the changes, we do not walk alone. God is with us. And we have the promise of Christ Jesus that he will always walk with us, be our friend and companion and our way shower. He has already gone this route. 
He knows the ups and he knows the downs, the, the twists and the turns. And we do not have to go it alone or try to figure it out totally by ourselves. God, we ask you to whisper in our ear and comfort us. Make the road less bumpy. In the fullness of time, we will stand in spiritual consciousness, in beingness, in expression with Jesus, and we will know. Thank you, God, for our holy destiny. May we have the courage, may we have the strength and the conviction to become a totally new person in the name of and through the living, loving presence of Jesus Christ, we pray, believe, and become our destiny. Amen.